Hello everybody, in this video I will show you how I built this truck loader model. This is the first video in the series and here I will show you the process of assembling the chassis. This video basically shows the same process as described in the assembly instruction, but you may find something important for you in this video. And of course you still have to follow the assembly instruction. So let's get started. Before starting to build the chassis, I do some post-processing of the parts. First I remove all supports and brims. Next step I calibrate the hollow diameters using different drill bits. 1.5 mm drill bit for the holes where the M2 screw should be tightened and 2.5 mm drill bit for the holes where the M3 screws should be tightened. To make it easy to tighten the M3 screws, I make threads using a tap. You don't have to thread the entire depth of the hole, the first 5 to 6 mm is enough. Next I connect the front and rear chassis parts using 12 mm long and 3 screw and after that I solder it parts along the joints using a soldering iron. If you have a printer with a large print area, you can fit these two parts combine it into one in the alternative parts folder and you won't have to spend time soldering them together. After soldering the parts, it's important to remove the screws and make a seam around this area as flat as possible, because this is where the truck body will be installed later. Next I prepare the 3D printed pulleys for installation on the chassis. I screw in these 20mm M3 screws to reinforce the pulley and avoid shifting the layers. Next I assemble the pulley and the bearings on the metal shaft and check that the outer side of the shaft is approximately 31 mm. Then I mark the position for drilling the hole and make the hole using a 2.5 mm drill bit. After that I make a M3 thread inside the hole. Also I made a chamfer around the hole and after that I installed the pulley on the shaft. After that I preassembled the drive sprocket with the hub and repeat all the process of making the hole position, drilling and taping. After this I attach the drive sprocket to the shaft and check that this assembly fit well into the chassis. Also I solder the drive gear and hub using a soldering iron to make this part more durable. I again check that this assembly fits into the chassis without any problem and remove the drive sprocket because it must be installed after installing the truck body. Next I install the first shaft assembly onto the chassis using a bearing holders. The bearing holders are marked with dots, so be careful not to mix them up. Also don't forget about the belts. For the second shaft I also marked the position of the screws with a drill bit, but this time I didn't drill any holes, because it's 5mm shaft and it's too small for 3mm holes, so I just made a flat areas. Before tightening the screw I add a little glue into the hole, it will help secure the pulley to the shaft. Sometimes aluminium pulleys come 20 mm wide, but for this model they must be 18 mm wide. But it's not a problem, you can hit the pulley with a soldering iron and push it inside the plastic part. And of course don't forget to use thread adhesive for the screw on the aluminium pulley. Next I finish assembling the shaft parts and install it on the chassis. This shaft must be secured to the chassis using bearings holders number 3 and number 4. They are marked with dots and they are also different, so you cannot install them incorrectly. Now 
Next I start installing the motors. Right motor must be installed first. You don't need to tighten the motor screw all the way at this point. After the installing pulley you can move motor left and right to reach required belt tension. And the same installation process for the left motor. At this point you can install an additional belt tensioner, but when I assembled my model I came to conclusion that I had enough tension in the belt, so I did not install the tensioner. After installing the motors you can connect them directly to the battery to make sure that everything works well. And after that install the side covers on the chassis. And now it's time to install the trucks. First you need to add an M5 nut with a locker to the front of the truck body. To hold this nut I use the screw. Next I prepared all the road wheels. To make their surface smooth I secured them in a drill using a screw and nut and sanded their surface. After that I installed bearings in the all road wheels. Now it's time to install all the road wheels into the truck body. And the last one is the tension wheel. It's important not to forget about the inner tube. And now it's time to return the dry sprockets to its place. And now the installation of the trucks. I like these types of rubber trucks because we had it after printing in one piece and all that we need to do is install it in place. It takes less than one minute and makes its stage of working on the model much easier compared to assembling the truck from separate parts. At this stage all the mechanical parts of the chassis are assembled and the model can make its first movement. When connecting speed controllers, do not forget to remove red wire from all cables that go to receiver except one. Also do not forget to switch the speed controller to forward reverse mode to remove the brakes in the middle.
at this point I recommend doing a test drive, because if problems are found, they will be much easier to fix now than after model is finally assembled. By the time I completed the chassis, I already had the body and cap pre-assembled, so I placed them on the top of the chassis and took it for a test ride outside. In total I had 3 or 4 test rides, totaling about 40 minutes. After test rides and fixing all minor problems, I continued working on the model. First of all, I decided to solder the truck bodies to the chassis, in order to increase the overall straight of the structure. Then after that, I finished assembling the chassis by installing the motor space cap. When I modeled this loader, I had the idea of placing all the electronic components on the chassis, to make the body and cap quickly detachable. This will make it easy to disassemble the model for chassis maintenance. You will see how I did it in the next video, so put your fingers up and subscribe to the channel. I will publish next video as soon as I finish editing it.